It's about that time of day again. My name is Joseph. Thursday evening, October 19th. Welcome back to your nightly newsletter. We're covering crude oil, S&P, NASDAQ, gold, and euro this evening. Crude is bearish with a spike in range pattern, telling me to focus on failures for selling opportunities up above the range high tomorrow. The S&P is bullish after recovering from a big overnight collapse, and my goal is to look for seller failures back below the moving average for the most reliable buying opportunities on Friday. Speaking of Friday, NASDAQ is bullish as we go into the end of the week, and my plan is to use channel rotation to buy the dip with a target up at yesterday's high. Gold is bullish with a big spike in range pattern, telling me to look for a fake out, breakout, pullback pattern on the way up to the measured move target on Friday. And of course, for Friday, Euro is bullish, but I have three levels of resistance in my way. So I'm waiting for a two-legged pullback for more reliable buying opportunities tomorrow morning. Speaking of tomorrow morning, I get a great newsletter in store for you guys and gals. We got a great plan for Friday morning. Of course, Friday, there's always a bunch of things we're going to cover for a Friday morning end of the week session. Before we jump into the newsletter tonight, though, I do want to remind you, the only place to watch the full-length version of this video is here on our blog at sidewaysmarkets.com. If you're watching the video right now on our YouTube channel, not to worry. There's a link in the description of that YouTube video. Follow that link. Come join me here on the blog at sidewaysmarkets.com and watch the full-length version. While you're here, don't forget, join the mailing list. I'll send you an email every evening when our nightly newsletter goes live. Lower left-hand corner, don't forget to follow me on your favorite social media channels. Stock Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. I'm always sending links and charts and updates throughout the week. And speaking of charts, how easy is that? You can get all the charts from tonight's video on your computer. Just follow that link in the lower left-hand corner that says click here to download today's charts. And speaking of charts for tomorrow, don't forget, grab that free pass. Come out and join me as a guest in the trade room. You're going to learn more with me on that free pass than you will anywhere else in on the interwebs. I can guarantee you that. If you're not a member here at School of Trade, make sure you grab that free pass in the upper right-hand corner. And if you have any questions about anything we talk about here tonight, don't be bashful. Don't hesitate. Hit me up on live support and call me in the office. And I look forward to answering all your questions. Let's get ready here for tomorrow. Tomorrow is Friday, October the 20th. And we are going to have an incredible OPEX Friday. That's right. Tomorrow is the third Friday of the month. That, of course, means options expiration. I wouldn't worry about this too much unless you're an e-mini trader. So NASDAQ and the S&P for tomorrow. Basically, what that means is we expect to see a little bit lower volume as that self-fulfilling prophecy kicks into high gear as we go into the end of this third week of the month. So OPEX for tomorrow. I wouldn't worry about it too much on gold, crude or euro but definitely on the e-minis right because of those stock indexes right being being uh, op options expiration at the end of the day tomorrow with that said big the big the big thing tomorrow is tomorrow's of course a Friday there are two things we always talk about when it comes to a Friday morning session the first one is early in and early out right there are two things we always talk about when it comes to Fridays the first one is early in early out what that basically means is is anything after 11 o'clock Eastern time you've got to have a really good reason to be taking on additional risk I don't recommend holding positions into the weekend and of course anytime we go into the end of the week end of the month Right, end of the year, whatever it is, end of the day, end of the week, end of the month, we always expect traders to take bigger risks. So volume tends to dry up on Friday afternoon. And of course, traders take bigger risks because they're either trading with house money or they're trying to dig themselves out of holes right, that they got themselves into early this week. So early in, early out is always really the best thing, right? kind of the best motto on Friday morning. Get in early, find those trading opportunities, make your money early, right, and get out of there early so you're not have to sit through the slop and chop, right, in the Friday afternoon, low volume, right, unpredictable uh, price action session. The second thing for Fridays are weekly levels, right? Weekly levels. These really come into, into play uh, as we get later in the session uh, on Friday, right? End of the week, we start watching last week's levels. So that means all of the open, high, 
low and close levels from last week. So last week's high and low are the big ones. And then, of course, last week's closing price and last week's opening price. Those will all start acting as magnets. The big ones are always the high, the low, and the close, right? High, low being the two most important, and the close, right? That prior week close. So those become magnets as well tomorrow. So early in, early out, and of course, those prior week levels, right, are definitely on our radar. So with that said, right, OPEX Friday tomorrow, a little bit lower volume, a little bit unpredictable price action on the E-minis. The charts tonight make it pretty easy, so we'll probably have a pretty good day no matter no matter whether it's OPEX or not tomorrow. And again, early in, early out, and watch those prior week levels. As it comes to news tomorrow, we have quite a bit of news right coming out of 8.30 and 10 o'clock Eastern time. Now, of course, you got news from Canada at 8.30. Probably not going to affect much more than crude oil tomorrow morning. So if you're an oil trader, keep an eye on the time around 8.30 a.m. Eastern time. Right, Big export out of Canada is oil. And then, of course, we have the existing home sales number. These have been very, very soft over the past few weeks. Uh, all of the uh, new home sales, right, all, all, the, all the home sales numbers coming out. Tomorrow morning, we have the existing home sales number. And I'll tell you, that 10 o'clock Eastern time is always a hot spot for us, no matter whether we have news there or not. So keep an eye out tomorrow, right? That is likely going to move the needle tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. And because it's a Friday morning, it'll probably be kind of the last little spike in personality that we see until the closing bell and traders start liquidating positions. So if I had to guess, I would say the best opportunities will come early the tomorrow morning because it's a Friday. But again, keep an eye out towards the end of that morning session around 10 a.m. because we do have some major news on the schedule here for tomorrow. Now, speaking of tomorrow, let's put the plan together here for tomorrow. Tomorrow, of course, a Friday morning, right? So we're looking at a bunch of those prior week levels. We'll go crude oil, S&P, NASDAQ, gold and euro this evening and of course starting off tonight on the black gold on the texas t right crude oil futures crude's bearish with a spike in range after the buyers were unable to take control after the sellers gave them a golden opportunity late in this morning's session now i don't want to mess with this trading range you can see we're kind of right in the middle of that trading range right now i want to mess with the trading range my plan as we talked about last night on our newsletter with the failure strategy, whenever I see a trading range, my plan is to focus on failures using the two try rule up above that range high and ultimately looking for buying opportunities using seller failures down below the range low tomorrow. It's also worth mentioning that this big move down overnight, right, which of course was kind of the pseudo anniversary of the Black Friday crash many, many years ago, right, this this move down overnight may end up being nothing more than a nice buying opportunity for the bulls in the long run. But I need to see some proof that these bulls are taking control before I can start really getting confident for buying opportunities going to new highs tomorrow. You know, if I zoom out on this, you can see this is this is on a bigger on a bigger scale, right? It looks like we're just pulling all the way back here, right? In what in what may be seen as just a nice deep pullback, right? I mean, in all reality, this may end up being a real nice deep pullback. We might find ourselves shooting right back up here tomorrow morning. And trust me, I, I, I really wanted to be, I wanted that to be the topic of, of this of this video tonight was how we're going to buy this market going back up into that range. But I'm just not getting any clues. There's no technical evidence right now of this market going higher other than the fact that it pulled back into an area where you would expect there to be long-term buyers coming in, right? But the problem is, is look what happened overnight. Strong move down. Now, that strong move down demands respect for the bears, right? You cannot look at that and think this is a, this is a bullish market. And of course, we see the two try rule and price jumps up. Well, in the, in the U.S. session this morning, we're looking at this as a right as a bull market going higher. It turned bullish after a quadruple right a quadruple down. I'm not marking this stuff up here because it's irrelevant for tomorrow. But the reality is, is this thing looked. It looked like if you would have if you would have asked me at 11 o'clock Eastern time what the day would look like when it was finished, I would have said, oh, it, it'll be right back to the high, right, right back to that high. But you'll notice, though, once they got just a little bit closer to that reversal line, couldn't they couldn't hold it. 
and the price just sinks back into right what looks to be like you know kind of this 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 happy place right for these for this market right now so believe me it's really I'm, I'm really trying to be as disciplined as I can right now not to say you know hidden channel buy it back up right but the bulls just don't have control and this is what this is one of the most important aspects of being a trader is don't trade what you think, trade what you see. And right now what I see is I see a strong move down where the bears had control. Sure, in the short term, the bulls took control this morning, but there's just no way to look at this chart right now and say, oh yeah, the bulls got it. There's just no way of looking at the chart right now because the bulls had it, they would have bought this little trap and this thing would have been jumping right back to that high. But instead, you see bears coming in. It's just, it feels like the market is comfortable right here at this 5150 area. So I've got to roll from there. And hopefully, you can see that I would love to find some reason to make an excuse to be a buyer right now because I think the location is good for it. But I'm just not seeing that on the chart right now. So trade what you see, not what you think, because I can think the buyers want to take this as higher, but if the buyers really wanted this, well, wait till you see the S&P and the NASDAQ, right? If the buyers really wanted this, we'd be doing the same thing the S&P and the NASDAQ are doing right now. It'd be the same thing the gold's doing right now, right? But once that price got jumping higher here, where are the buyers? Where are the, they're not. What we're seeing here is, is sellers coming in, one try, two try, and back down in. Trade what you see, not what you think. So what I see right now is, I see a strong move down. It's not a spike in channel, right? It's not a flag, all right? Not a flag, it's, it's, it's not a wedge, it's gotta be a spike in range. Flattening out, back and forth, choppiness. So we're coming off the high, little pendulum swing up off that high, expecting a pendulum swing back down to that low, right? We talked about that earlier on this week, right? Pendulum swing up, pendulum swing down. So I'd love to see, even though it's a bear market right now, I'd love to go one try, two try, and then back up in. That might end up being one of those big delayed two tries. You know what I mean? Uh, if, you're, if you're a client of mine, I always talk about the fact that the first try, the distance between the first try and the second try often takes longer than you think it will, right? This might be a real delayed first try, second try, and that might be the bottom of this weekly move. We'll see. But obviously right now, overshoot, overshoot. I'm watching this battle zone here. One try, two try, right? And then back up. From there we go. There is a falling resistance level here, so I will have to use that. You know, again, whenever you're falling resistance, you want to make sure you kind of use it as resistance and then get back above it and then look for the buy from there, right? So failure for the buy, I call it a breakout pullback for the buy, right? Above that, above that trend line, and then back up from there. We already, we already had the break above the high, one try, two try, and back down in. We should be moving back lower here at that point. If we move higher, this is right. Basically, if we move higher without rotating, right? Remember, one of the most important things about a trading range is rotation, right? Low to high, high to low, low to high, high to low, right? Overshoot, overshoot. We should be going back down again. If this market runs up, I'm going to look for that prior low right there, right? 91, sorry, 51.92. There's your prior week high, right? Weekly levels, tomorrow's a Friday. So this area right here is a real important spot here for me. Again, I'm looking for one try, two try, back down in. I'm also keeping an eye out on what is, and again, I, I really wanted to try to make this kind of hidden channel work, but there's just no proof of it yet. So what I'll do is I'll watch and see what happens here and then look for that to hold. And if we start seeing that thing hold down here, then we can look for some probably probably middle morning right buying opportunities off of that area. So we may be able to play both sides of this. One try, two try, back down in. Watch that rising support. Then we may be able to see bears into bulls, and then up we go from there. It's going to be a little bit. It's going to be all about personality tomorrow. It's going to be all about that pop because if the market kind of if it kind of moseys its way higher here. That's not going to be enough to tell me it's, it's going bullish. But if this thing just runs, right? If it just runs higher, you know, you know what's going on, right? You know what's going on. 
you, you know it's not a range anymore. It's just for some reason the, the, the bulls just were waiting or the bears have been holding on. If it runs, right, if it really runs, that's going to tell you whatever bears are in the market, they're losing, they're losing strength and they're giving up on it and they're becoming buyers. If that's the case, though, watch for that. Again, watch for this kind of – it's like a – like a hidden channel here, right? So if it really runs, watch, make it go, and then careful by that pullback right from there. Here we are getting ready to wrap up what has been a phenomenal week, this third week of October. Don't forget, if you like what you saw here today, send me some feedback. You can post a comment on my YouTube channel. You can send me an email to jj at schooloftrade.com. You can drop me a line on my live support. How can I make this a better place for you to learn and earn with this newsletter? I'm always listening and I always appreciate your feedback. If you want to learn more about the trading strategies that we teach and trade every day in our trade room, don't forget our free trial. If you're on the YouTube channel right now, there's a link in the description of the YouTube video. Follow that link over here to the website at schooltrade.com and register for our free trial. While you're here, don't forget, we have a place for everyone here at School of Trade. Whether you're brand new or you're a seasoned veteran and still trying to find that consistent reliability, I'm going to teach you what I call the price action cycle, and you're never going to you're never going to look at charts the same way ever again. If you're serious about your trading career, check out our courses on SchoolTrade.com. Don't forget to hit me up for live support questions. If you guys have any questions, don't forget no newsletter on Friday nights. We'll be in our trade room tomorrow morning at eight o'clock Eastern time. My name is Joseph. If I don't see you guys tomorrow morning, have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. We'll see if the Dodgers can lock up this this, this game this game five tonight in Wrigley. I am I, I told you guys last night I am not I am not I'm I'm definitely worried I am definitely worried these are the these are the reigning World Series champions we're talking about here right now. They are a very good baseball team and I am not comfortable with a three to one lead. And you can only imagine what it feels like to be an Astros player right about now when you got those damn pinstripes staring you right back to. Back to, of course, Houston, right, in a couple days here. Boy, oh boy, what a great weekend it's going to be here for some sports. Hope you guys had a great week. I'll see you tomorrow. If not tomorrow, we'll do it again next Monday for our next edition of our nightly newsletter. My name is Joseph. Be well out there. Be nice to each other, will ya? And be here next time. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye for now.